Hey folks, Lemonade here, and today I'm exploring a mouse from the past, the SteelSeries Prime Mini Wireless, released last year, but is a hot contender for my favorite mouse of 2022? Yep, this is going to be an interesting one. Let's get into it after this. Right. Before we get into it, if you decide you enjoy this video, don't forget to like and sub at some point down below. It does help the channel out a lot. Thanks. Alright, so we're going to knock out the specs here real quick, then we'll get to the nitty gritty. So for the sensor, it uses a True Move Air Sensor by SteelSeries. More on that later. It's rated at 100 hours of battery life with the default lighting setup. So if you disable the RGB, possibly even more, which is crazy. It's the most I've tested so far this year. 1000 hertz polling rate, 73 grams in weight. Dimensions are 120.3 long, 66.2 wide, and 40.7 millimeters in height. Comes in only one color, black, and it retails for $129.99 USD. But it's on some stupid sales lately and they're still going on past this Black Friday, Cyber Monday stuff. The sales have continued. On Amazon, it's going for $77. That's where I bought it from. On SteelSeries' own website, you can get it for $45. Shipping's like 10 bucks in the US, so $55 out the door. That's, I mean, what? Honestly, at its full retail price, it's a bit pricey coming at the end of 2022. But if you can get this at like $70 or less, it's a steal. I'm kind of spoiling the review a little bit, but honestly, if you like small ergo mice, go grab this now. It's fantastic. Minus a few things, so let's get into it now. Okay, so let's get into a quick tour of the mouse here. Bring it up a little bit closer. You see we got USB-C for charging. Scroll wheel is the only RGB on the mouse. It's also customizable in the app. The steps are defined and the texture is quite nice. Wish it was a tad lower and the touch was easier to actuate though. Side buttons, I feel they are a little bit too high on this uh, ridge right here. They should definitely look to drop them lower. It's also been a common complaint from other users, so something for them to fix. Skate design, we have this kind of hybrid design of two small feet and the one wider foot down here. It's my preferred style for a nice balance of speed and control. The actual skates are some of the best stock skates though. I have tried pretty much identical to the Viper V2 Pro stock skates incredibly smooth and well-rounded you really shouldn't have to replace these for a while they have these nice grooves here that you can easily remove the skates again that's a nice touch not all mice have that all right so let's chat build quality it feels exceptional in this mouse there's no creaking no flexing i mean it's 73 grams so it's a bit expected there are more materials within the mouse now hold on one second i know some of you will be like oh 73 grams, it's too heavy, not interested. And this is actually one of the reasons I never bought this mouse or was really interested in it many months back when I first looked at it. All my mice on the desk are pretty much 60 to 65 grams or even less at this point. And there is a good reason to have a lower weight, less fatigue, less straining, easier and smoother tracking and stopping power, etc. And as a wrist aimer using fingertip more on that later, it should matter even more to me than anyone else, but it's actually kind of been workable for me. Now I say workable because I do think this is something that they should improve on the version two of this mouse if it ever comes out. 
If they get this right around like 60 grams, I'd be super happy. If they can nail sub 60 grams, even better. Also, I will add that the weight balancing is a bit more front heavy, so bringing it closer to the center would be ideal. Now, again, I'm saying this from the perspective of a wrist aimer that floats around 26 to 34 centimeter on my 360. So if you run a claw or palm grip and incorporate more arm movement, this mouse is seriously going to be just fine in terms of its weight. Yeah, the increased weight is gonna be noticeable versus something like a 55 gram mouse, but you'll get used to it, I promise. It may seem like I'm shilling here a bit and going against all the review gods and mouse warriors who swear by sub 60 gram weight, but it's because of the shape. And as we know, shape is king in mice. Before I get into the shape though, I wanted to touch on QC a little bit. So while the mouse has felt really great, uh, I do have a little bit of internal rattle that is noticeable, even with light shaking from side to side movement. Take a listen. Okay, now onto the shape. So for reference, my hand is uh, 19 and a half by 10 centimeters wide. Again, I use fingertip grip and I'm a wrist aimer. This is kind of my preferred grip style right here, as you can see with a bit of a uh, gap. But who is the shape for? It's an ergo mouse, so it can't be good for a lot of different grip styles, right? Well, wrong, actually. It's completely versatile. You can palm this pretty easily. You can claw it, and again, even fingertip. The first video I ever did on this channel was of the x V2 Mini. You can <laughs> check that out here if you want. And in that video, I said maybe I just wasn't into ergo mice for my particular grip style. The x had just too much curvature on the right side over in this area. But the Prime Mini eliminates that. So essentially the mouse is almost like part ergo, part ambi mouse. The right side is fairly even as it goes to the flare at this point right here, giving you a nice area to rest your fingers along this edge. That's pretty even. And then it just beautifully tapers aggressively at this point right here, which for fingertip is great because it eliminates these contact points normally on more kind of rounded shapes. And on the left side, it's gonna be easier to see like this. You have a nice deep comfort groove for your thumb. And then as you move to the front of the mouse, it does something unique again. It tapers inward like an arrow almost, making the front nice and narrow. Similar to kind of like that holding a pen sensation some of us are always chasing with thinner mice. So again, you get this kind of wider base that tapers aggressively so it doesn't dig into the back of your palm too much. And then you have a nice narrowing and then kind of the that tapering to that arrow like tip at the top. Also on the sides, you can see that they actually come up around left and right click. You have a small ledge here to rest your ring finger. And on those buttons, you actually have nice deep comfort groove so you can get that locked in feeling on the clicks. And onto the hump itself here, it doesn't really get in the way all that much to be brutally honest with you, at least again for my grip style. The advantage of the hump for me is when I'm not locked in, say I'm kind of playing more casually, playing Warzone or Apex, I'm just kind of crossing the map and looting in early stage, I kind of have a nice comfortable spot to give my hand a rest like this when I don't need to be dialed in. Overall, the shape is an absolute gem of design and there really isn't anything quite like this on the market. But we gotta talk about this sensor. And this is reason two of why I avoided this mouse for so long. So remember I told you that this was the True Move Air sensor. Well, it's a Steel Series branded and adjusted Pixar 3335. Yeah, oof. So I've always been a firm believer of getting the best spec for your dollar, and I'm always going to recommend that. And yeah, the 3335 is older than the 3370 in most mice you see these days or even the newer 3395 on some of the top end mice like Pulsar's X2 and Lamzu Atlantis. It's even technically less performant on paper, but after using it heavily every single day for a bit over a week now, I just honestly cannot tell the difference. That said, if you're paying $130 for this, it's gonna be a harder pill to swallow. But if you remember in my Model O Pro video, I gave Gloria some heat for this very decision. See the video up here if you want. And I'd say the same for Steel Series. But it seems it won't be $130 anytime soon. And at as low of a price of $45 on the website currently, it's really just a non-issue at that price point. 
And this is probably gonna be the biggest point and legit the reason I bought the mouse. When I was looking into this, I noticed some marketing on Amazon and on the website of this man right here. Yeah, that's right. That's Kerrigan. And if people don't know who Kerrigan is, he's the lead on FaZe Clan's Counter-Strike team. And he uses this mouse. Well, he uses the larger version of this mouse, but everything else internally is exactly the same, including this sensor. Here's some food for thought. He and his team just won the IEM 2022 tournament that was just a few months back with a total prize pool of a million dollars. Now, I don't follow Kerrigan that much or even Counter-Strike in general. I've heard of him, but I'm definitely not a fan. But think about it. If he felt comfortable to use this mouse or this sensor and not have any perceivable disadvantage with it against literally the top players of the world, some of which used arguably better mice, like there was quite a few uh, G Pro Superlights in the tournament, then I'm completely comfortable in making the determination that you all watching this video will not notice a difference that will actually matter. Let me repeat, I'm always going to be an advocate for getting the best bang for your buck in the top end specs when you're buying a new product. But in the world of mice, shape and weight balancing are really just far more important to focus on as a player. Now, I do expect companies to include the best stuff on offer. So Steel Series, if you're watching, we need top tier sensors on your top end mice. I gave glorious heat for this and I'm gonna give it to you too. I know for a fact a lot of mouse nerds avoided this mouse for the sensor alone. Players wanna feel that they have top end specs for the next six months, a year or two when they're spending over $100 on a mouse even if the difference isn't perceivable. Competitors like Razer and Logitech are pushing the sensor technology forward, and so should you, SteelSeries. Okay, so onto the switches. These are also a bit unique and custom. They are optical magnetic switches rated at 100 million clicks. I personally enjoy the feel and the thickness to their sound, as you can see here. But that being said, they are a weightier switch to actuate. If you play games like Fortnite or Minecraft, then mice with switches like the Juanos or Kales will feel spammier and lighter to use. This might not be the best fit for those games. But for games like COD, Apex, Battlefield, where there is more bursts of activity, then I'd say you're gonna have a great time with these. The coating is this textured plastic that's similar to Razer mice like the uh, Viper V2 Pro and the Orochi. One of my favorite coatings, it's grippy without getting too slick. And for my sweaty hands, I've had zero issues. So in terms of comparisons, I don't actually have that X-Lite V2 Mini anymore, but I distinctly remember not feeling too locked in with that mouse like I do here. Now, if I had to compare it to my longest running main, the Viper V2 Pro, I actually do enjoy the Prime more. Now, don't get me wrong, the Viper is a stunning mouse. It's just a tad too long when compared, and I prefer the way that the Prime kind of tapers at the front and the rear for my particular grip style. That all said, it sounds like I'm raving about this mouse the entire time, and yeah, I kinda am, but it does need work in a few key areas to make it perfect. So I would say if they bring the weight down to around 60 grams, if they can achieve even sub 60, go for it, but 60 to 65 is acceptable. Lower the side buttons so they are just a bit more reachable for most folks. And lastly, make sure we get that top end sensor. For example, if you're gonna refresh this in 2023, at least a 3395 on this. So overall thoughts, you could probably tell, I love this mouse. It has a few flaws, but its shape is second to none. For the price that I paid, it's a stellar deal. Like I said at the start, if you can grab this for even cheaper, like that price of $45 on their website, do not hesitate, trust me. And while I have a few more mice to test this year, this legit might end up being my number one mouse of 2022. A mouse from 2021, who would have thought? And on that note, all my socials are down below along with any affiliate links and discount codes. If you had a good time with me today, Likes and subs are again, always appreciated. Leave a comment down below, let me know your thoughts. But until the next Fresh Squeeze video, stay thirsty folks.